We are visiting Mark from Leader Chuck International, having a great Mac 2022. Uh, uh, absolutely. I mean, it's been uh, a fantastic show. Uh, we didn't know how it would be. Could have been no visitors. It's been non-stop. Yeah. We've, non we've had to squeeze in to get some video done. Yeah. How many products in your range? Or not products? How many ranges? Uh, All together, we have approaching 30 different brands uh, that we're, we're representing here. Okay. We're not going to go through them all, but we're going to do a quick, and it is a quick run through. Yeah, sure. Balance systems, what, are they, what have we got here? Okay, three disciplines here that we're showing with the balance systems do. The first one uh, over there is balancing the grinding wheel dynamically whilst it's being used. Uh, making sure that it stays in balance, uh, so keeping the performance, keeping the surface finish. Next to that we've got uh, some electronic uh, gadgetry that will tell the machine when the grinding wheel touches the workpiece. So we know where we're starting our grinding operation from and sets the datums for re metal removal. Okay, so making it super accurate in, in a nutshell. In a nutshell. And last but not least for balance systems? Uh, yeah, in process gauging. So whilst we are removing that material in the grinding operation, we can be measuring the diameter to set parameters so that when it reaches that preset diameter, this stuff tells the machine, job done, back away. Get, let's get the other component, the next component on there. An awful balance system, so super, super accurate. Moving on quickly, yeah. face drives and live drives here. Yeah, what we're showing here is our, fa uh, our face drivers and our supporting uh, centres. So uh, typically shafts like this may be ground or milled or turned between centres. What we have to do is support one end on the, on the centre line, but we have to provide the torque transference to turn it from the other, hence face drivers that you can see here. And you can do a number from the, from the catalogue, but also bespoke, and, that's and who's that from? That's from Technology FRB of uh, Bologna. Brilliant. I made you say that because I kept getting it wrong when we were at, at EMO. Yeah. Now, next, this is a new range, I understand. Yeah, what we were, uh, what we were showing here is a brand new range of uh, tool holder collets, uh, tool holder, tool holders. <laughs> tool holder, tool holders. Yes, hydraulic tool holders. Um, they are hydraulically activated by turning the, turning the wrench, uh, in, a screw goes into a captive a reservoir of hydraulic oil. As that pressure is applied, the tool will be clamped in the in the bore. We fear that we fe feel that these are going to be bigger, uh, give us big advantages over the collet system, both for rigidity, speed, vibration, and the heat shrink. To, whereas with heat shrink, you've got to invest in a heat shrink machine. The things get very hot. You can't necessarily touch them until they've cooled down. But with the hydraulic versions, because the tool is surrounded by a reservoir of, of hydraulic oil, uh, the anti-damping effect yep. means great results on vibration. So cost-effective solution. High speed, balanced, yeah. yeah. And so no, uh, no vibration, so not only the tooling, better surface finish, but also back into the spindle, longer spindle life. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, you're right, Colin. Moving on quickly. Sure. So, JTO. Uh, yeah, we have different, uh, here we're showing different uh, collet chucks, uh, manual and pneumatic 5C, 16C collet chucks going on to lathes. We've also got them for mills as well, for verticals. We've got some drill chucks here from Lambrick. Just uh, going back to Jato, these are, the, these are diaphragms, so super, super accurate? They are, but these, these ones actually aren't the diaphragms. The cool. diaphragms are over this side. Sorry about that, no Mark. No problem. And then next uh, one. Auto grip chucks, we do a whole suite of auto grip power chucks. Two jaw, three jaw, four jaw. One, this is the one, one jaw. jaw, yeah. One jaw, so that if you've got a workpiece like this where you've got a datum that you want to turn, then you can have a, have effectively a, a, a vice on a lathe. So we can hold that up against this datum here. Yeah. We know where it is, and we can perform the facing and the boring. Okay, another great solution. Then back, I'll get our ca camera camera person back here. So the Lambert chucks, sixty thousand RPM, great for medical. That's right. Yes, uh, sixty up to sixty thousand and uh, they have the certification, the ISO certification for the medical industry. Okay, brilliant. And then, quick change yours, put them yeah. under pressure. Is it quick change? Yes, it's quick change. Is that quick enough? So, yeah, that's how we change quickly, one jaw to another. Typically, uh, customers will, will have sets of base jaws with preset top jaws already on them, swap them over like that when they've got another job. Bang, take those out and put new ones in. Nice and simple. Now, rotor eye. Rotor eye, when you want to bore these jaws, perhaps you want to bore a specific diameter in them, instead of using bits of scraps of metal or that you, you might find to hold the jaws mid-stroke, there's a more scientific way of doing that. 
uh, if we provide you with a chart that will say what size is your chuck, what, what do you want to bore, OD, ID, right, choose ring number 18. Right. Nice and simple. We put studs into the counter bores of the jaws and we clamp the ring and that will stop it mid-stroke so you can pass through the ring and turn your profile into the jaws, the okay. gripping profile. Now moving on next, we've seen these before, the Heimbuck quick change. Yeah, we've represented Heimbuck since 93, so we're well experienced uh, with their product range. Uh, here we're showing the uh, standard now, collet chucks that you can remove the collet instantly, put yourself into a, a man mandrel situation for ID clamping, or if the, you're exceeding the collet capacity, remove the collet and you can put a, a jaw yeah. adapt into that takes you up to 200 mil uh, components, great, billets. Great flexibility, very, very fast. And then yeah. this is your own range of chucks, is that correct? Yeah, what we've got here is um, uh, the front here are, are, are a suite of manual three-jaw chucks. Uh, actually, they are from uh, File in okay. Italy. But behind that, we've got our own chucks, uh, leader chucks, uh, two-jaw, uh, long-stroke power chucks, our self-contained air chucks. We, we do these in three small sizes, three inch, four inch, five inch. But we've introduced into the range during this COVID uh, period, uh, greater diameters of chucks. And having bigger diameters, we can have through holes. These are self-contained, so they fit on the front of the spindle. Uh, giving you full spindle capacity without a draw tube. Right, so they're, like, they're smaller profile themselves so you can get bigger components? Bigger components, uh, well, bigger th through bore uh, if, you, if you're using a bar feeder because you don't have a draw tube. These go up to I think 500 mil diameter as standard. They come in two jaw, three jaw and four jaw uh, chucks. Deliveries are very good as well because we've got all the components made just ready to assemble. Brilliant. Perfect, because everyone who's going automation, say automation in bar feed, so that's absolutely brilliant. Right, next, over to the next stand, next area yep. in the corner here. Now this is clamp holding on two, two positions, two. is that right? Yeah, what we've got here is uh, a special chuck from Rotomores. We've worked with Rotomores now for many years, and they, they specialize in special chucks. This component had to be gripped in, on two diameters, but the cu customer could not have a tandem cylinder, so we couldn't have two actions. We had to only have one pullback action of a cylinder. When we load the components on here, we activate and the lower jaws and the upper jaws, the upper jaws begin to clamp and the lower, and they force the lower jaws to clamp as well. So we get the component that we mean held at the top and the bottom, we get perpendicularity zero degrees. I was waiting for that word, perpendicularity. <laughs> yeah, and uh, vertical. That's exactly what you want, perfect. Yes. And obviously we, we can transfer a good grip into the drive to get the rotation. Okay, now steady rest, new to the, new, fairly new to you guys? Yeah, this is from the same people that make our, our manual chucks. They now do a suite of uh, steady rests, from small to very big. Here's the first example that we're showing here. Right, so next one, we're moving on swiftly, Piranha. Piranha clamp vices, uh, like you see here, um, no pre-stamping, clamp the workpiece, these teeth really dig in. Uh, if we want to, uh, for, for first up, second up, we can use hardened and ground jaws. If we want to change that, we, they come off and we can put blank jaws on that we might uh, machine a profile into. Very simple to move over and change. Are you going to get repeatability, rigidity with that though? Uh, well, it, it obviously does fasten. Yeah. I mean, I'm just showing you that. Uh, but uh, well, underneath we have the zero point system, uh, 52 and 96, so it's interchangeable yeah. with uh, yeah. other um, zero point systems. An old, an old favourite, blue photon. Yeah, blue photon. So, irregular parts, I'm thinking. You're thinking right. Things like turbine blades, anything that you isn't concentric, isn't doesn't have parallel sides. How are you going to hold something so obscure? Well, a fixture is made with stops, so we know precisely where it goes. The, uh, before the component is loaded, we will put a, uh, an, some adhesive on each of these gripper lenses. The component gets loaded and then from underneath the UV uh, light will pass through those lenses. Yep. If we look at this from the underneath, you'll You've see... done this before haven't you? <laughs> yes. The, uh, the UV light passes through there and that cures the uh, P size uh, um, adhesive that we've put on there, bonding the workpiece to the stop, to the gripper. What clamping force per stop? 270 kilos. <laughs> okay, so if it's, if it's attached, it ain't moving in, in no, a nutshell. It's not moving, it's not moving. And then when you've finished, there's two ways of uh, releasing the component. 
from the underneath you can put a socket wrench down there hexagon half a twist yep. that's that's broken the bond or or you can submerge in water uh, hot water it's like a cartridge steam cleaner or something like that that yeah yeah that will clean the top certainly okay zero point and what's okay. this this is our a two jaw indexing chuck we do a suite of two jaw indexing chucks they'll either be manual clamp and manual index or they can be power clamp and power index they're self-centering a lot of uh, indexing chucks have one fixed jaw and one moving jaw we chose the self-centering route because it makes the best of any casting or forging that you are uh, hoping to machine bear in mind when you've clamped it you machine the first face pull the handle and it turn the turn it th then through to the second up which might be 90 degrees it might be five degrees as long as we know what uh, the degrees of uh, indexing we can make the chuck accordingly it's good for uh, like your hydraulic joints things like that yeah yeah absolutely valves our biggest customers are valves pipe fittings moving on quickly then so Jato oh, so, oh well, well back to zero point yeah uh, zero point uh, we've represented uh, zero clamp from uh, southern Germany for many years this uh, typically this what you see here will go onto a machine yeah milling bed pull studs so the pull studs will go will go into a fixture. You, uh, we put air on to the table, and that that opens the chucks or the pots. We can remove the remove the fixture, load in your next fixture, switch the air off. It's clamped. You say fixture that could go into a billet as well, though, could it? Yes, it could. It could go directly into the workpiece. Yes. Yeah. Right now, can I move on to the Jato? <laughs> yeah. So Jato. diaphragm super super accurate. Yeah. So now you're looking at the diaphragm chucks that we're talking about. Yep, we would typically ha make sets of jaws like this for clamping really small uh, inside diameters. This one ha uh, will clamp a rectangle, for example. We can do squares. As you, I'm sure you remember, Colin, how the diaphragm works. We just deform the, the plate so the jaws move outwards, load the workpiece, and then let the plate come back. Very tiny movement for your thin walls, your ceramics, and things like that. Yeah, very good. Next. <laughs> Next, uh, another leader product. This, these are our award-winning uh, multi chucks they are uh, low we kept them low profile we wanted them top operated and we wanted a large jaw stroke so from uh, with a quarter of a turn of the key or half a turn of the key you get in all that stroke and then you come into the clamping stroke right. using our rotor eye we can bore the profile in there uh, for the workpiece that you want keeping it super accurate super rigid yes yeah next carve smart carve smart is a is a vice uh, jaw system that comes standard on our orange vices but it's also sold as a an, an optional extra so we can fit it to any vice uh, when when you want to change your jaws on a vice you, you might have to open open it up get your key in there and keep undoing the jaw or undoing the cap screws this is all top operated so to change our to change our vices our vice jaws from the top. You've done this before, haven't you? I have, yeah, I hope it works. <laughs> <laughs> and we change. The Dell pin makes sure that the, the jaws go back in exactly the right place uh, for repeatability. Profiles of aluminium jaws are similar to what you see here. You can see the dovetail that goes in there. These are just three of the profiles. These are the whole five. One of them is a size that is flippable, so you can put it in, work on this face, but, but for a second ops or for a different op, flip it over and it will still fit in. Double up, essentially. Yeah, yeah. Twice the life out of a jaw. It's cost saver and engineer, they absolutely you love it. Single, different, different work pieces on the same, in the same vice. Really, really flexible solution. Right, nearly there. It's a great, great showcase of a lot of your products. What have we got going on here then? Okay. Should we, um, in the corner there? You, you, you choose, Mark. Okay, in the corner there, there are uh, a range of our magnetic chucks from Walmag. Again, uh, we've represented Walmag for a, a long time. We're showing here milling chucks, grinding chucks, and turning chucks, one of each. Uh, all good for, for those materials that can obviously be gripped by magnet. We've got a couple of uh, robotic grippers here from uh, O-Mill uh, out of Turin. Uh, as well as their air vice, uh, so for five axis where perhaps a manual vice is taking you more time than you desire to tighten and untighten, you could instead of it in the same footprint, you can put a, a pneumatic vice. There you go. I think covered it all. No. One, one more, Le <laughs> two more really. Two more. Lex Air from the States, uh, pneumatic collet holders, uh, collet closers. 
and we'll perhaps we'll finally talk about this one. This is uh, quite new. This is uh, last, not least, but definitely smallest. Definitely the smallest. I can't imagine there's a smaller three-jaw chuck in the world than this. Uh, but this is out of Maprox in Switzerland. Uh, well known for their watchmaking, uh, as well as um, measuring uh, devices. But we have a selection of the, the collet chuck, small collet chuck, a jaw chuck, and, a, and another chuck there. Mark, you've done that all in one here. Absolutely fantastic. Not every single. 30 different ranges. I'm not gonna, we're not going to go through how many products you've got, but there's hundreds, if not thousands of them. Oh, yeah. Great work, essentially great work holding solutions for all sorts yeah. of different things. Anything else? Or? No, I think, uh, I hope uh, the visitors that have come to see, see us at Mac have enjoyed the show and uh, will come back and see us in 2024. Our stand is already booked. We've booked twice the size that we've got now. Uh, really looking forward to that. Brilliant. Mark, thank you very much. An absolute joy to see all this. And we look forward to seeing some of the customers who bought some of these products very shortly. That's it. Mark Jones, Leader Chuck International.